The land was infinitely richer beyond the roadless country to the north, rolling westward as far as the eye could see, beneath the ridges of Alaska Range that lay along the southwestern horizon like a sawed-tooth wall of stone. Although the forest cover was somewhat spotty on the exposed ridges and north-facing slopes, there was no doubting the abundance of life around me. Everywhere I looked I found evidence of the recent presence of animals, tracks in the snow, bones picked clean and scattered about. The night before, a set of wolf tracks crossed the path I was following, and I imagined the animal was somewhere in the timber watching me as I moved through the valley. I walked for hours without seeing another human being, and the silence and solitude gradually wore me down. I became vaguely aware of unwelcome sensation creeping into the periphery of my consciousness. I tried to suppress it, but it persisted, growing stronger with each passing mile. By late afternoon, the feeling had become unbearable, and I knew what it was. Loneliness. I had never experienced such sense of isolation, even in most remote parts of the desert southwest. The landscape too began to change as I moved deeper into the wilderness. The trees grew taller and more densely packed, and the forest floor was obstructed by a thick mat of moss and ferns. The air was cooler and damper and the scent of spruce and pine was pervasive. The sound of water became a constant background murmur, and I soon realized that I was following a river or stream. As the day wore on, I climbed steadily higher into the mountains. The trees grew shorter and more stunted, and the ground became rocky and barren. The sky was overcast and a light rain began to fall. I huddled beneath a large boulder and watched as the mist shrouded the peaks above me. The sense of loneliness and isolation grew even stronger and I began to wonder what has possessed me to undertake such a journey. Yet despite the hardships and the occasional moments of doubt, I knew that I was in the right place. The beauty and grandeur of wilderness around me was nothing I had ever experienced. I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the opportunity to be here. For the first time in my life, I understood what it meant to be truly alive. I knew that this was the feeling that I would carry with me for the rest of my days. As I continued my journey, I encountered a host of animals. Caribou, moose, beaver, foxes, and countless birds. It was a veritable menagerie, and I marveled at the sheer abundance and diversity of life around me. I also saw evidence of animals that I couldn't see tracks of grizzly bears and wolves, the sound of an owl hooting in the distance, the rustling of small mammals in the underbush. The wilderness was a symphony of sights and sounds, and I felt privileged to be part of it. The more time I spent in wilderness, the more I became to appreciate this wilderness. This was not a manicured park, or a nature reserve, but a place where nature was truly in charge. There were no trails, no campsites, no signs, no fences. The landscape was constantly changing, shaped by forces of the wind, water and ice. There were no guarantees, no safety nets, no second chances. If I made a mistake, the consequences could be severe. 
But this was also what made the wilderness so exhilarating. I was truly alive and in a way I had never been before. As I traveled deeper into the wilderness, I also came to appreciate the fragility of the ecosystem. The smallest changes could have cascading effects, and even most insignificant seeming creature had a vital role to play. The wilderness was a delicate balance. It was up to us to protect it. My journey into wilderness was not just about testing my physical limits, but about experiencing something that is increasingly rare in the modern world. A true connection to the natural world. It was about finding sense of purpose and a sense of belonging a sense of humility, and it was about recognizing that we are just one small part of a much larger, more complex and more beautiful world. As I traveled through the wilderness, I couldn't help but think about relationship between humans and animals. We have long viewed the natural world as something to be conquered, to be tamed, to be exploited. But in the wilderness, I saw things differently. The animals around me were not simply resources to be hunted or obstacles to be avoided. They were living beings with their own needs, desires and ways of life. I watched as a group of caribou gazed on the tundra moving gracefully through the landscape. I marveled at the way they had adapted to this harsh environment, growing thick fur and hooves that allowed them to traverse the snow and ice. And I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and respect for these creatures that had managed to survive in a place that seemed so inhospitable to humans. But I also saw the impact that humans had on the natural world. I saw the remains of an old mining camps and logging operations, scars of the landscape that spoke of our desire to extract resources from the earth. I saw the litter left by careless hikers and campers, evidence of our disregard of the environment. And I wondered how could we continue to live in such a way exploiting the natural world without regard of its well-being. The natural world has the power to inspire and uplift us in ways that are difficult to describe. 